Hello. Hi, Eric. Hey, Megan. Welcome to the flip side. Welcome to the flip side. Hey, great singing today. Oh, loved thank it. You. Great loved preaching. it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Thanks so much. Well, it's good to have all of you here with us on the flip side. Thank you for yes, sending in some yes. questions. And we're just going to ask them straight to you, Eric. Let's do it, Megan. We want to hear and some I'll more. And I'll kick them back to you. Okay. All right. So our first question is about Ukraine, actually. Great. Can we go there? Yeah, of course. Okay. We prayed for Ukraine and have Facebook posts about Ukraine. Why single this event out? What about the people of Afghanistan and the people of Yemen? Yep, yep. There are so many conflicts out there. Why did we single this one out? Great question. Great question. Um, I would say uh, a couple of reasons. One is the, the immediacy that the invasion just happened last week. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, the, the scale and the geopolitical implications of this invasion are unprecedented in our lifetime. And, uh, and then thirdly, uh, we, we just have to discern what to talk about when. So we have posted about Afghanistan in the past and prayed for Iraq and prayed for Syrian refugees. And um, it is true that we can't, can't post about or pray for every humanitarian or global crisis every week. There, there's just too much happening. So it's just discernment. Mm -hmm. And it feels like um, this, one, this is important in the scope of the world. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a great question. Great yes, question. It is. Thank you. Thank you for that time to pray over Ukraine. Yeah. Um, all right, question number two. Since God uses our trials to grow and develop us spiritually, are there times when asking God for a miracle to heal us or to change our situation, et cetera, is hindering our growth? And how do we know? Interesting, interesting. So basically, like, if we pray for God to heal us, would we be skipping maybe the spiritual growth that would happen in the suffering? Is that before? Right, like that's the question, yeah. So I would say, I've actually been thinking about this a lot and would, would, would love your thoughts, literally this past week. Um, number one, always pray for God to intervene in your circumstances. Pray for healing, whether it's physical or spiritual, restoration, Pray all the prayers for, for God to intervene, right? Jesus said, may his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want God to intervene. And while we wait, because he's sovereign, right? That's why we need him to intervene. While we wait, we can have faith that he is at work in us. Um, uh, another another day this week, I read in Hebrews. Uh, so there's a little uh, little plug again for this Bible reading plan through the Bible in about two years. It's not that much, like it's not an overwhelming amount of scripture. And it's a little Old Testament and a little New Testament every day. And it sort of skips around. Anyway, uh, Hebrews 12, 7 ish. It said something like, um, something about the fact that all hardship and enduring hardship um, is something that God has for us for our own growth, that it's God disciplining us. Not, not like punishing us, but refining us, forming us, shaping us. And man, there's nothing like suffering to do that. And I was yeah. literally thinking yesterday how I would opt out of all the hard things in my life if I could. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the Lord say, I feel like he said to me lit literally last night when I was laying in bed, he said to me, so you would take comfort over growing to be more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. most of the time I would, but thankfully I don't get that choice. <laughs> he loves me too much to give me that comfort and let oh. me out. So yeah, yeah. yeah well, I don't know what, what stands out to you on yeah. this one. No, I totally, I mean, that speaks to me too. I, I so quickly turn back towards comfort, but I know that that is not, that is not what God has for me in every situation. So I, I love this question because, oh, how we all just want to do the will of God always. But, but yeah, so I have to look at the examples in scripture of um, the characters in the Bible how they pray to God yeah, and ask God right. for things. Yes, and, yes. And examples of Daniel in the book of Daniel and David yeah, in right. the Psalms yes. and how they pray, honestly, and use that as a model of how I That's am great. to pray to the Lord. And I, I do ask him. I do ask him for those big yes, miracles and yes, those small ones. And I ask yes. him to change situations. I ask him to help change the Ukraine situation. Like we, we go there in yes, our prayers. Yes, But we also have to hold that it, that tension of knowing, okay, God is sovereign and I have to be okay with every scenario. And it, it's a, that's a lifelong it is. lesson. It is. It's lifelong, right? We're never going to finish. We're never going to finish with that. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Question three. Um, how many signs should I look for? So I know that what I feel led to do or, or I, left, excuse me, feel led to go is God's will. 
Okay, so this is the, the, like, how do I know what God's will question? So yeah. there are seven signs in the Gospel of John, and they tell you that God's will is to believe in Jesus as the Messiah, the hope of the world. Um, so that's not what this question is about. This question, it feels like it's more about, like, the practical, a job, a mm-hmm. uh, marriage, like mm-hmm. something like that, right? College choice. Um, I would say a couple things. Number one, look for... Um, Look, uh, look for a posture in your heart that is submitted to God and his word. Like, do you really want to know God's will? Do you really want to know what he has to say? Are you open to the scriptures? Are you open to correction? Mm-hmm. That's one. Um, then secondly, community, mm-hmm. right? Bounce it off other people. Bounce it off your community group. B- bounce it off your friends. And look, we all know people who don't really want to know. Right. So right. you got to wrestle with, do you really want to know? Right. right. Do you really want to know? And you want to be that kind of person. And then... Um, I would not place too much emphasis on circumstantial signs. I would say Mm -hmm. the word, community, the inward witness of God's spirit in your life. But uh, there's a a story I heard a youth pastor say one time about a couple of kids who were thinking about getting married. Mm -hmm. And they were super young and they had no business getting married. And they they came to meet with him and they said, "Uh, hey, on the way in, um, we saw a rainbow. It's a sign. And they meant like it's a sign they should get married. And he said to him, it is a sign that God will never flood the earth again. It has nothing to do with you getting married. So be careful of like license plates and rainbows and clouds. Right. Right. Different direction. And like like they seem like they were doing in that scenario. Check it. Check it with somebody that you. Yeah. Ask an older, wiser person. An older, wiser person. Yes. Yes. Your community. Like be humble and open to to a different answer than you might be thinking you're getting. But I, um, yeah, that's an interesting question. What, cause signs and the sermon that the series that we're talking about, we're talking about the, the miracles that Jesus performed. Right. Yeah. Um, which I just, I love the way you put that today. Thank you for yeah, it's gonna talking be, about Yeah. It should be fun. It should be fun. Um, all right. So we have three more questions because <laughs> not basically, a hundred percent. I couldn't get Facebook Live to work uh, <laughs> on, on Tuesday. Tuesday. On Tuesday. I, I literally, I couldn't get Facebook Live to work. Were you at home? I wasn't home. I'm just like te- technically a noob. <laughs> I was long. I was logged into the wrong account, and so I was going live to myself, and and I had Sarah Joy with me, and we recorded. I don't know, maybe ten minutes of content, and people were like, "Hey," and I'm like, "Wow, no one's commenting. I'm surprised that no one's here. Usually, there's like ten people." So, Bummer. we have a couple questions yeah. from the, the we're Facebook gonna... Live that we're gonna hit. And then if there are any others that come in, we can do them. All right, go, go for it. Okay, and this is around the topic of money and finances. Yeah, last week's sermon was money. Yep. Sermon. Yep, okay. yep, yep. All right, so sh- switch gears a little bit. What can I do if I can't attend Financial Peace University because I work nights? Are there any resources? Great. So I would go to just Google Financial Peace University. You'll find Dave Ramsey's website. And I am confident that through the pandemic, they came up with a way to do financial peace online. I will be shocked if there isn't. There are also Financial Peace University classes all around Hampton Roads. Yeah. Every every church or group that's doing financial peace registers with the Dave Ramsey organization. Mm-hmm. So you could actually see all of them. So I bet there's one that will work for you. So that's it's what you, all the same curriculum. It's all the same curriculum. Just, it would be a different building. Different building. The day. Yep, yep. Or maybe self-study online. Okay. But just Google Financial Peace University and they will... They will help you. They will help you there. Beautiful. Okay, next question. I'm divorced and my ex does not know how to handle money. Do you have any advice on how I can teach my kid the value of money when I only see him every other weekend and holidays? He only goes to church when he's with me. Yeah, I'm sorry. That um, I, can, I can only imagine the pain that that yeah. would, would be. Um, I would say uh, to model and I would love your thoughts on this. I'll just go first. Uh, first thing that comes to my mind, I would to model financial responsibility for your child, mm-hmm. like in your own life to be financially squared away with whatever God has given you. And then as they get older, to teach them how to manage their money. So that would be when they get money from grandma or a little money from doing chores, teach them that you give the first 10% um, back to God in his church. Uh, I would, you know, teach them that. Show, you know, talk to them about the fact that you do that. We teach what we know, we we reproduce who we are. So you're handling money well, and then you're inviting them into that in age-appropriate ways Mm -hmm. um, is is what you can do. And I would encourage you to do that. What do you think? 
<laughs> God. Sure. It's allergy season. Yeah, not COVID. This not is COVID. virtual. Sorry. It's fine. Sorry. I'm not Sorry. safe. It's yeah. going to be a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry, Megan. It's, you're totally fine. I'm an allergy sufferer okay. as well. I deal with this. Okay, so I totally, I, I feel for you. I feel, feel that tension just coming through that question. Um, and just an encouragement, you know, even though you aren't seeing your child regularly, Teaching children anything takes repetition over and over again. Like, we're not going to get it. Your sweet child is not going to get it. Maybe in the next year. But if you are consistent with the truths that you are teaching him and you're consistent with the way you talk about your finances and, and talk about money, something will catch on. I, I mean, you have kids older than me. but Yeah, it's true. But it, it is that. It's starting when they're early, teaching them the basic give first, teaching them about saving. When they're older, teaching about a budget. We... Um, our kids use, I think they use every dollar. Huh. Uh, um, An app on their phone. Yeah, I think they use I think they use every dollar to, to budget. There's a bunch of budgeting apps out there. I think that's the one they use right now, uh, our older kids. And it's great. Cool. I mean, they're, you know, and, and honestly, temperamentally, some of them are super into it. I have one kid who's like super into the budgeting and other kids who are like, eh. So please persevere. Yeah. yeah. Persevere. And I, and I think another important lesson with our children there is to always show in age-appropriate ways how the Lord always provides. Oh, that's good. Like keeping that's that real good throughout. Like, well, look how he provided here. And just always drawing your kid's attention to the way the Lord provided in big or small ways. And even if it might, you know, there might be disappointment in that, but to be able to find the areas where he does provide. Love it. Yeah. Love it. All okay, right. Okay, another question. Okay. Um, is tithing based on a gross or net income? Great question. While I answer this one, do you want to flip back just to make sure there's no yeah, other, nothing came in? Is tithe, the classic, is tithing based on gross or net? The funniest answer I've heard to that is, do you want to be blessed on the net or do you want to be blessed on the gross? Uh, <laughs> I just thought that was funny. Uh, you know, it's, you know I, I mean, I would encourage you to think about tithing on your gross. And I, really what I would think about is a heart of surrender to God. And instead of seeing there as like this limit law that you have to get over to live a life of surrender. And um, sure, you know, like we're never going to regret our generosity towards God. And I think the default is the gross, but it's really a heart issue. It's really a heart issue. And so um, if in your heart you're convinced to, to tithe on the net um, and you're being generous, then you know, that's that's what he wants is it where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So Yeah. And that's is, what I would say. Are questions like that gone over on another level in Financial Peace University? Like defining what that Well, so that's even defining that's good. So your gross would be all the money you get before taxes. So let's just say you make a thousand dollars a week. So your gross is a thousand dollars and your net might be eight hundred and twenty dollars a week. So there's that hundred and eighty dollars that you didn't see. So some people would say, well, I didn't see that hundred and eighty dollars, so why would I tithe? Shouldn't I just tithe on the eight twenty? And the point would be, well, you got it. You just had to pay it to taxes and social security and all that stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so why would you not honor God on the whole thing? But again, we really, if we are focusing just on the minimum to do, I think we've lost at a heart level. Right. Yep. Yep. So I would just encourage you to continue to just pray for open-handed surrender. Yeah, that's Why, good. I mean, if you're not sure, just go with the gross. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Any, good. Anything else? No. Those are all the questions. All right. From last week and from today. Great. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for answering. And hey, thanks for doing it, Megan. Yes. Well, it's good to have you here. We will see you all next week. See you on the flip side. Bye.